back to your favorite elementary school teacher. Why do they stand out? Are you having fond memories of them teaching you cursive writing? Probably not. They were more likely the teacher that had a big fish in the back of the classroom named Bubba that you and your classmates got to feed throughout the year as you learned about different habitats and, and animals. When I was in fourth grade, I had a wonderful teacher. While I remember him reading us stories in the back of the classroom, while my classmates braided my hair, that isn't the memory of fourth grade I loved most. It was when he would trick us all by leaving the classroom and coming back moments later disguised as a mad scientist. I'd mix potions to solve the daily mystery for my very own Bill Nye. Years later, as a student athlete at Amherst College just down the street, I remember our team's basketball practices to prepare for the big showdown against our rival. Instead of the typical, or I should say in addition to the typical run through of our opponent's plays and reading through the scouting report, our coach, G.P. Gramacki, ran us through a simulated game. Now that's not just a fancy word for a scrimmage. You've heard of neurosurgeons preparing for brain surgery by doing a simulated case on a 3D printed brain hours before the real thing. In our case, GP would train our practice squad, which included members of the men's soccer team, on our opponent's plays and have us scrimmage them. These role-played scenarios really got our adrenaline up and allowed us to get those competitive juices flowing as we felt what our, opponents, uh, what our game against our opponent would really feel like. By the time Friday night rolled around, we were beyond prepared. My experiences in fourth grade problem solving made science fascinating and inspired me to become a science teacher. My team's practices in these game scenarios allowed us to understand our opponent's strategy and ultimately win game after game. This is because some of the most powerful learning happens when you're given a challenge that feels especially real. As a teacher, I continue to try to exploit such experiences, such experiential learning, to encourage my students to love learning and, and love science especially. I currently work at Harvard Medical School's Med Science program, where we take the flipped classroom to a whole nother level for high school students that visit us weekly throughout a whole semester as part of their biology class or their anatomy and physiology class from Boston Public Schools and schools in the surrounding greater Boston area. We teach in a simulation center, which allows our kids to leave behind their identities as students, and delve into patient cases, seamlessly absorbing new roles as residents in training or nurses at the local hospital. Imagine, you're a 16-year-old kid in biology class. Your teacher just handed back your test, and you did really well. But all of a sudden, a vitals monitor is beeping, and someone's screaming for help. You look around the room for your teacher, and you don't see her anywhere, but in the back of the room, a mannequin is breathing and blinking and apparently talking and asking for a doctor. What would you do? Well, I can tell you what my students will do. They'll immediately get up and run over to the patient and become entranced by the only thing in this room more intriguing than a blinking and talking and breathing mannequin, that mirror. They'll begin checking themselves out, flexing their biceps, popping pimples even. But pretty soon, these teenagers snap back into focus when the patient cries out some version of, hello, I'm right over here, will somebody help me? And these kids immediately go back to problem solving. If you're the outgoing A plus student like Megan, who wants to be a trauma surgeon when she grows up, you'll begin asking the patient questions. Or if you're more like Jamari, who's quieter but generally creeped out by this mannequin, you'll dive for an Expo marker and begin charting down all, of the pa all the patient information that your teammates gather. Regardless, these students are so far removed from being in a classroom, they're in another world. They feel empowered by these new roles and feel a sense of ownership over this new experience. Let's take a look as a fly on the wall. Um, what, what's the matter today? I 
just don't feel well. Inevitably, about 10 minutes into the case, a teacher is needed. Maybe the students haven't noticed the patient's blood pressure has dropped dangerously low. Jamari's doing a wonderful job on the board, but he doesn't need to be the scribe for the whole case. Maybe there's a student that's kind of held herself back and she's a little overwhelmed by all the patient's signs and symptoms and would benefit from a quick pause. But it will only serve to deflate the scenario for me to enter the room as their teacher. So instead, I enter the room as Nurse Anne or Betsy, the patient's anxious mother. In an entirely question-based format, I'm going to help guide these students back on track and bring their confidence back up. I'll call on one student to please present the patient to me. Well, I'll call on another in the back of the classroom to tell me what, what does he think is going wrong with the patient. On my way out, I'll request that all doctors rotate their positions around the bedside, and just like that, I am gone, and the teamwork and problem solving can resume. The case continues like this until a correct diagnosis is reached. I re-enter the room as their teacher, congratulating them on a case well solved. There are heavy sighs as these students unwind from a stressful shift on the job, but they're bursting with excitement and questions and comments about the case. Megan feels even more prepared for her future career, and Jamari realizes his grandmother has the same thing as the patient. These students are hooked and eager to understand what just happened and to connect all the patient's symptoms to the basic biology that they've learned in class. Before and after our program, we survey our students. And among many other statistics, we find that 88% of our students agree the simulation deep, uh, deepened their understanding of these biology concepts, while 91% of our students found that this med science pedagogy allowed them to really retain the information. As a teacher at Boston College High School, where I used to teach science, I sought to fill my students' minds like a bucket with a stream of content. I'd sprinkle in fun videos and cool lab experiments. But finally, I realized that the bucket that I thought I'd been filling all this information into was overturned. And all of the content I'm one way, this one way conversation, is all just streaming onto the floor. I realized my students' minds are much more like kindling that will ignite when hit with a strike of lightning. If I can first immerse my students in a scenario that gets them to care deeply about a topic, they are more willing to absorb information after. We don't need to lay out the facts for our students in a lecture format. Rather, let them experience the facts for themselves, discover these facts, and from there, a teacher can pick up from there and connect the complex science for them. So why doesn't every teacher do this then? Well, it's not as simple as just throwing your students out into an experience and sitting back and, and watching it all happen. If it were, you'd be watching a novice bowler repeatedly hit gutter balls, only occasionally hitting the learning objectives at the end of the lane. In order for the learning to happen, teachers need to immerse themselves into the scenario in some new role that allows them to be the bumpers or the guardrails on the side of the bowling lane that keeps the kids on track. I dare you to be all the educators that take this user-generated experience to your classrooms, to your science classrooms, but also to your history classrooms and your English classrooms. Not only will your students engage with the information more deeply, but they'll improve their communication and teamwork, they'll build their confidence, and they'll be able to problem solve on their own. I dare you all to be the next educators that take this user-generated experience to your own classrooms. Not only will your students be able to engage with the material more deeply, but they will be able to build their teamwork and their communication skills, and they'll build their confidence and be able to problem solve on their own. Now you all here in this audience already understand the idea of experiential learning. You're here at TED because you know this event has the power to inspire and ignite a passion in you. How today affects you, no one knows. But once you're inspired to feel something, you will inevitably be hungry to learn more. And that is the point. When we think back to our favorite class we ever took, 
we often remember it by the teacher we had. But at the root of that memory, it's so much more than the teacher or even the topic the class was on. It's about how that teacher and how that class made you feel. When we are inspired to feel something real, we can connect more deeply. Those educational moments that allow our students to feel something real are the moments that make our students' curiosities bloom and allow them to inspire a passion. Thank you.